Hey everyone, welcome to today's tutorial, which is on PHP XML parsing. We're going to download some random data from a website so that we can actually do a live coding session as we go along. We'll, so we'll go ahead and use this website called mockaroo.com, which can generate us some random mockup data, which we can use to try and do this little bit of a coding challenge uh, for XML parsing. And then what we'll do is we'll try and uh, display the data in a nice little way at some stage in this tutorial as well. So before we get started, I just want to say, uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so now and hit the notification bell if you want updates for any tutorials in future. So here is what I did. I basically went to uh, mockaroo.com and I selected XML. And what we'll do is just download a data set. Then what I'm going to do once it's downloaded, I'm going to drag it into my project over here and it's called uh, PHP XML Parser Tutorials, the folder that I have. And let's just rename this data set just to be something a little bit friendlier like dataset.xml. Now let's have a look at this before we get started. Um, so XML data basically usually has this little version over here just to tell you what the type of the encoding is, etc. It just makes your life a little easier when parsing the XML. And then it will have individual tags, which has this bit of a, a parent-child relationship. So data set contains record and record contains IDs and so on. And if we look at this data, it has an ID field, it has a first name field, a last name field, it has an email field, gender and finally an ip address field so this is the sort of data we're going to get from this xml file and we're going to try and read it in php and then do something with it to display it in a very nice way so let's get started um, by just creating a php script that we can use and then we'll uh, just go along and progressively just experiment and try and read this data so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over to my folder and I'm going to create a new file. And I'm just going to call this PHP parser .php. And then the first thing we need to do is just open up our PHP tags. And then to actually load this data, we just have a very simple PHP function, which is great. So we'll just declare a variable. Um, and then we'll go ahead and use simple XML load file and do dataset.xml. So here I'm just gonna do an or die just to handle any errors. And I'll just say can't load XML. So that's if we can't load this XML, it will just throw out this message and not execute anything after this. So let's uh, first of all, just look at the data in terms of how PHP has read it. So I'm gonna do a print R XML. You could do something like var dump as well for those who use var dump. But uh, for me in the terminal print R is just a lot clearer. It doesn't have all this extra information, which I don't really need. It just has the pure data with the structure. So let's uh, just run this. So we'll do php, uh, php parser dot php. So I need an extra over there, I run that. And basically I'm just gonna press Control C to stop that. And then we can look at this. So it looks like every single little element has the same data set and it's over and over and over again. So it appears that we can just simply loop over this data. So what I'm gonna do is to just do that. We can uh, get rid of this and we can do a for each. And we can go as XM, well, we'll take XML and we'll loop over it as record. And then I'm gonna print R the record. So we can see if that's actually splitting this data up into individual records. So we'll run this again and control C. And then if you look at this, you'll see now that it's basically splitting the data up into individual objects. And uh, simple XML objects are quite nice in the sense that you can very easily access these fields. So to give you an example of how easy it really can be, you can go ahead and just do echo over here and you'll do record and then you'll just use, let's say first name for example, just to start off. And uh, we maybe just want to append a new line to this so that we can see them under one another. So run that and you'll see it just grabs all the first names from that XML. 
So very freaking simple. So let's now go ahead and try and build up a little bit of a table for this. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, echo out a little bit of a line just to create a basically a heading or basically to create a table for ourselves. So I'm just going to put in a whole bunch of hyphens and a new line over here. And I'm going to do the same below this for each. And then what we'll do is we'll start displaying some of this data uh, using pipe delim delimiters because what I want to end up with is something that looks like this. Uh, pipe, name, pipe, and maybe like email address, and then a pipe. So it, you'll see it looks a little bit like a table. So we need to go ahead and create that with these little ASCII characters. So let's uh, go ahead and just first, just start with the first name and last name and add them to this. So first I wanna have a pipe before that. So I'll do that. And I'm actually just going to space it so it's not against the pipe completely. And then we want to have a last name, so a record. And uh, let's just make sure that that uh, variable is correct. So we need to go up and find the print. So we're looking at last name. So we could actually literally copy this and we could paste it in here and use it. But I'm going to type it out. And from here, we want to again have another pipe. So pipe again. And we want to then Let's add the email address here. So we'll do the record and we'll do email. And then we can do another pipe and a space and dot. And we can now do, let's say record gender. So I just type record correctly. Gender like that. And then we're going to put another pipe and the IP address finally. So we'll do record again, IP address and a pipe and we'll do a space as well. And we can actually leave slash in like that. And let's save this and see what this looks like right now. Now you can see it looks better, but it's completely a mess because everything is misaligned um, and that's not great for us. So what we want to do now is we actually want to apply some logic um, to just align these things a little bit better. For that, we need to pad it out with some characters. So I'm going to define a new function. Uh, so we'll just create this little bit of a function to pad this for us. And we'll just call this pad. And there's going to be two variables. One, we want to say up until where we want to pad it. And then the next thing is we'll just take in a value basically and it'll be our last name, email, gender, IP address, etc. So how this will work is it'll just basically check if the length is uh, correct or not. If it is not, then it'll apply some logic to go and pad it out for us. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to uh, just basically do an if statement and I'll get the length of uh, basically our value. So the string of what we pass in, so the email, so it'll be, the string length of email, last name, first name, whatever we are passing in. And then basically if that is less than the length, we know that we need to pad it. So here we'll go and we'll just do a bit of a for loop. And I'm just gonna use i to start and then string length of our value. And then I'm basically going to say that as long as i is less than our length that we, did, we want, we will increment i. And then while we're doing that, we'll basically just add to our value, we'll add a space, so a blank space. And then at the end, we'll just return that value. So now what we can do is we can actually go and apply this to our individual variables. So for length for a first name and a last name, I'm going to make it about 40 characters and let's put it in around both of them. For an email, I'm going to go for something like 40 characters as well, and we'll put that around the email. The gender isn't very long, so let's make this maybe 10, and put that around the gender again, and then pad 
IP address. And I think we can make this probably about 20 characters and it will be safe. And we put it around there again. So now let's run this, see what this looks like. So you can see that looks a lot better. It's now nicely aligned and uh, we can actually read this a lot easier. So just uh, down here, we wanna just fix up our dashes. So uh, just add a bunch of hyphens and see if you can line it up. And run that. And how close are we to? No. So this is a bit of uh, manual work to do this, but you should be able to get some algorithms as well, which you might be able to use to to get this what we could maybe do is we could actually try and do that so instead of echoing it out we can just call this row and then we can say uh, we want a string length of this so let's just get the string length and row like that just to see what this is and let's start off with um, actually let's just add a new line so that we can see what the string lengths are for each of these. We can more or less get an idea. So a lot of them are 124. So we can maybe start off with by creating something which will create the dashes for us. So I'm just gonna create a function called dashes and I'm just gonna put in a length and then I'll just say for i is equal to zero. i is less than length. And we'll just increment the i. And then we'll basically build up a little dash string. So we'll just say string. And we'll start with a blank. And then we'll go ahead and say string dot equals dash. And then we'll just return this string. And let's see what happens if we now just go ahead and uh, do this instead. So we'll still put the new line there, but we'll say dashes and we put in 124 here. Let's see if that helps us. And let's do the exact same thing over here. And does that actually, okay. Instead of doing this, we want to echo out the row like that. And let's see if this actually works. That's pretty damn close. We uh, maybe just want to do this by basically going equals here instead and let's see how that looks so that's also not right maybe we want to go ahead and still do that but maybe minus one so we'll do minus one so you can do a bit of trial and error with this and basically that makes it perfect so that's how you can do it uh, just by doing it with code rather than actually doing it with um doing it manually and if you really wanted to you could now go and you could say str len row and uh, we don't know what it is at that point because we haven't built up the string but you, you get the idea of what you could do and you can then have this table structure from the xml file we downloaded so guys that's the end of this tutorial i hope it's been useful if you liked it please like below and if you have questions please comment as well Thanks again for watching.